Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of Design Your Own Airplanes. This channel is dedicated to making your own model airplanes that actually fly, with a specific emphasis in airplane design. So if you're interested in airplanes, and you're looking for a science fair project, or something fun to do with your kids, or even just a fun weekend project, then you're in the right place. In this series of videos, we're going to be experimenting with aerospace engineering principles using simple gliders. These gliders are hand-launched and fly much like paper airplanes. They are made from common, inexpensive materials that can be purchased at most hardware stores. We're going to be learning how to make planes that can look like anything you want them to. You might want to go with a more conventional looking design, or you might want a crazy looking design. As we go, we'll also be learning about aerospace engineering principles and how to apply them to optimize the flight performance of your aircraft. We'll be learning to make airplanes that can either be slow and floaty, or that can be sleek and fast. Finally, we'll learn how to optimize our designs to maximize their range and flight time. In this video, we're going to be learning how to make this baseline glider configuration. Our objectives in this video are to, first, teach you the basic building techniques so that you can start making your own planes, and second, to give you a reliable airplane design from which you can start experimenting with your own designs. A key characteristic of this plane is that it is designed to be modular. This means that it can be divided into several components or modules that can easily be connected or separated. The first advantage of this approach is that it makes it easy to experiment with different designs that you might want to try. When you want to modify your design to try to get a better flight performance, you can easily remove parts of your plane and replace them with different ones without having to build a whole new aircraft. The second advantage of a modular design is that it makes the airplane easy to repair. Experimenting with new airplane designs does put you in a position where accidents are common. If part of your plane is damaged, it's very easy to remove and replace the damaged part without having to build a whole new plane. But that's enough talk. Let's get building. Before we begin, we'll go over a list of the building materials and tools that you'll need. The first thing you'll need is a sheet of Adam's Ready Board, which is also referred to as Foam Board. This can be purchased at Dollar Tree. Second, you're going to need a quarter inch square wooden dowel. These can be found in the lumber department of most hardware stores. Additionally, I recommend that when you're selecting a dowel, you look down the length of it and try to choose the straightest one that you can find. The third thing that you're going to need is a pack of zip ties. These can usually be found in the electrical department at the hardware store. The fourth thing you're going to need for your plane is some weights. I chose some 3 8 inch nuts and bolts that I found in the fasteners aisle at the hardware store. You could also use other small heavy objects for weight, such as batteries or fishing sinkers. Fifth, you're going to need some bits of scrap wood. I grabbed a popsicle stick. And finally, you're going to need a rubber band. You might also want to have a roll of wide scotch tape, but this part's optional. So now that we've got all of our building materials, let's talk about what tools we're going to need. The first tool you're going to need is an X-Acto knife for cutting the foam board. Additionally, you'll need some extra blades. You might also want to have a cutting mat to go along with it, so you don't cut into your table. The next thing that you're going to need is a glue gun and some extra glue sticks. I've got a pretty large glue gun, but even a small one will work for this project. To cut the wooden dowels, you'll need a small saw, and it will also be helpful to have a miter box. You might also want to have a block of sandpaper as well. Finally, you're going to need something to tighten down your zip ties and trim off the excess. I'm going to be using a small pair of pliers. It might also be helpful to have a small kitchen scale for weighing your glider at the end. Now that we have all of our building materials and tools, let's start the construction. Start by marking the outlines of your foam pieces and then cutting them out with your X-Acto knife. For the wing, you'll need a piece with a 30 inch wingspan which is about the width of a foam board sheet, and a 5 inch cord. For the horizontal stabilizer, you'll need a piece 10 inches wide with a 3 inch root cord and a 2 inch tip cord. For the vertical stabilizer, you'll need a piece 4.5 inches tall, also with a 2 inch tip cord and a 3 inch root cord. You can also experiment with different wing and tail shapes if you want a different look for your airplane. We're going to be learning more about that in the next video. Next, we're going to be waterproofing the wing and tail. 
This step is optional, but it might help your plane last a bit longer. Start by peeling the paper off of the foam board to save some weight. You can also leave it on for extra strength. Next, crush the leading and trailing edges of the wing and tail pieces to make them more streamlined. Lay down a piece of tape on the leading and trailing edges, and then fold it over to help them keep their shape. Lay down tape over the rest of the foam, and then trim off the excess. Now that we have our wing and tail pieces waterproofed, we're going to add some camber to the wing. Camber is a slight curve in the wing that helps it create more lifting force. We're going to be talking about how this works in a later video. Make a cut along the top of the wing, two inches from the leading edge. You'll want to cut through the tape on the top of the wing and the foam, but do not cut through the tape on the bottom of the wing. This should leave you with a nice hinge. At this point, we're going to take our wooden boom and we're going to lay it down underneath the wing along the hinge. Just like that. This creates camber by putting a slight curve into the wing. Fill the crack with hot glue to help the wing keep its shape. Try to squirt the glue down as deep into the gap as possible. You can also take your knife and trim off some of the foam to make the gap a bit wider. You can experiment with different amounts of camber in your wings by making more or less of a curve. We're going to be talking about how this affects the way that your airplane flies in a few later videos. At this point, you can also round off the corners of the wing so that they don't crumple as much if you have a hard landing. Now that we have camber in the wing, we're going to add dihedral. Dihedral is when the wing curves upwards like this. What this does is it helps prevent the airplane from flipping over in flight. Cut a slot in the wing, six inches inboard from the wing tip. Prop something under the wing tip to give it an upward slant, and then lay down some glue to hold it in place. Lay down some more glue into the crack on the underside. At this point, your wing is finished. Next, cut your wooden boom to the appropriate lengths. You'll need one piece that's six inches long, one four inch piece, and one piece that's approximately 26 inches long, depending on how much leftover wood you have. At this point, we finish building all of the pieces of the plane, and it's time to start assembling it. Sand the center of the horizontal stabilizer so that the glue will stick to the tape. Glue your four inch piece of wood onto the horizontal stabilizer so that half an inch sticks out on each end. Next, glue the vertical stabilizer to the middle of the horizontal stabilizer making sure that it's straight. Rough up the tape in the center of the wing as well. Lay down a bead of glue across the wing and then glue the six inch wooden dowel into the middle. Again, make sure that half an inch sticks out on either side. If the gap caused by your camber is a little large, you can add some triangles of foam to fill it. Mount the tail piece on the back of the 26 inch boom and use a zip tie on the front side to secure it in place. Use the rubber band to secure the back end of the tail. Cut out a few pieces of scrap wood, and then place them at the back of the plane, between the boom and the tail. This will give the horizontal stabilizer a slight downward angle. Next, zip tie the wing onto the boom. Make sure that the leading edge of the wing and the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer are 15 inches apart. You can also experiment with different tail lengths, which we'll be talking about in a later video. At this point, you're almost done, but there's still one problem, and that's that there is too much weight on the back of the airplane. To compensate, we're gonna have to add some more weight onto the front of the plane. Add some weight at the front of the plane to offset the weight at the back. Also insert some pieces of scrap wood to prevent the zip ties from digging into the wooden boom so that you can move the weight forwards and backwards if you need to. And finally, your plane is finished. At this point, it should ideally weigh somewhere between 90 grams and 120 grams. We'll talk about how we got those numbers in the next video. You can also decorate it with colorful tape and markers. But for now, let's go fly. To get a good flight, you'll need three things. The first is that you need to throw your plane straight and level, similar to throwing a dart. If you throw your plane at too much of a downward angle, it'll just go straight into the ground. And if you throw your plane at too much of an upward angle, it'll slow down and then go into a dive. 
The second thing that you need to do to make sure you have a good flight is to make sure that you have the weight distributed correctly. If you have too much weight on the front of your plane, it will tend to steer downwards. This is what's called being nose heavy. You can compensate for this by removing weight from the nose or by sliding the weight backwards. You can also compensate by putting more pieces of scrap wood under the tail to give the horizontal stabilizer more of a downward angle. On the other hand, if you have too much weight at the back of the plane, it will have a tendency to steer up and then fall out of the sky. This is what's called being tail heavy. You can correct this by adding more weight on the front or by sliding the weight further forwards. You can also take pieces of scrap wood out from under the tail to give the horizontal stabilizer less of a downward angle. It's also possible that your plane has a tendency to steer to one side. You can compensate for this by taping coins or washers onto the opposite wing to balance it out. The third thing you need to do to get a good flight is that you need to throw your airplane at the correct speed. If you throw your airplane too fast, it will have a tendency to steer up so that it slows down. And if you throw your airplane too slow, it will go into a dive to pick up speed. So that's it. You've learned how to build your own plane and how to make it fly. In our next video, we're going to start learning the basics of airplane design. So if you're excited to start creating your own airplane designs, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.